So welcome to another episode. We're gonna teach you how to pump. There's many ways to pump. But we're just gonna stick to the right one, the one that refers to skateboarding. Think about this, pumping is, a, uh, pumping is a sick skill to have around. It's something super useful to know. The energy from their shoulders goes straight to your feet and how you feel that energy coming out of each pump that keeps you moving forward without having to push. You might look goofy. We all kind of, you, you could look goofy. Would you, you be, you look good goofy would you, you, while pumping, but to be honest, who cares? Are you in? Because I'm ready. Now, sneak, there's no one looking right now, Tess, go. All right, I see everything right now. Look at this matrix. It's like a known language to me. Now, hard right. Good, let me just hack the code and real quick. Man, I'm so good at this. Tess, now go, scurry. That guy won't see you. Nice, moving fast. It's a good job, Tess, you're close to the source. You're almost there. Test now down that little ravine and into that crevasse. Nice. The technological skills of the loaded warehouse are unmatched. Now grab as much urethane bumpers as you can. Good. Who's there? Taz. Taz, do you copy? Taz, are you there? Oh my god. Is that you, Taz? Taz, are you there? I hear talking. Who is that, Taz? Just ignore them and get out. We need those urethane bumpers. Taz, report back. Taz? Taz, Taz, Taz. <laughs> Tips to pump your flexi board. Number one, once you're up to speed, find a good rhythm and just get your body gyrating. That's right. Timing is key. Diving into the carve, you're gonna feel a lot of your weight flexing into the board. And then right as you're coming out of that carve, changing direction, you're gonna feel this floating sort of sensation. This would be the moment where you would either high side or you would get ready to drop into your next carve and really compress your board to be able to get more energy out of it in the following carve. You're not only gonna push sideways, cause some people do that, doing like this it doesn't work. So you gotta do sideways, but also forward. Dig in, push in every carve. Heels, toes, momentum, carving. Dig your toes, dig your heel into the board, get up on your toes, kind of monkey toe action going on there, and maybe hang your heel off just a little bit. You're looking for as much leverage as you can get to really get the most pumping out of your board. So you're gonna use the flex on your board to dive into it and then release and follow that movement and get ready for the other one and so it's back and forth, back and forth, back, back and forth. It all starts on your shoulders. Use your arms. Your torso is gonna follow. You want that upper body to be throwing the momentum around while your lower legs, while your lower body and your only legs. And then your knees and then your toes and then your feet and then your wheel. Are translating that momentum into a pumping sort of snake-like serpentine movement. You gotta feel the energy of your board, man. So setting up your flexi board to pump properly. Let's first start with the wheels. You could go with grippy wheels to get the most grip out of every single carve so there's never any slip and you're never losing any of your momentum and your speed. Or you can go with a stone ground rounded edge wheel which will allow you to still pump pretty decently but you'll be able to sneak in a little bit of a snap slide here and there for added pleasure. My recommendation is to do grippy wheels to be able to get the most out of your carves and your pumping. There's many kinds of pumping. We're teaching you the skateboard pumping. 
Next, we move on to trucks. Your decision is between wider trucks or narrower trucks. I think your decision should be based on the overall size of your board. If you have a wider board or a longer board, it's usually a good idea to go with wider trucks. Also good to remember that if you're trying to do bigger wheels, wider trucks are gonna be better. Gives you a little bit more clearance so you avoid getting wheel bite. The problem with having wider trucks is that you won't be able to pump very easily at slower speeds. You're gonna have to get a couple kicks in. You'll be able to really start diving into those carves. So every time you're carving in, the trucks are less likely to be tipping over and, and leaving the ground. So you can really send it into every single one of those carves. On the other hand, there is narrower trucks. You'll be able to start wiggling right away. You don't have to get to a certain speed. You could probably start from standing or stopped position and just a little bit of turn, 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 and all of a sudden you're just wiggling off. Their ability to have that quick and sudden twitching ability, however, that's the downside too. Your top speed isn't gonna be as high as with wider trucks and it'll be more unstable once you reach higher speeds. So what kind of bushings will you be using? You could probably go with the stock bushings on whatever trucks you get. It's basically personal preference. You could try cones because it's easier, but then once you start experimenting, super high rebound or high rebound bushings like the orangutan nipples would be fantastic. Bearings. You can literally use any bearings. You don't need a trip. Don't even trip, dog. Ceramic, doesn't even matter. Abex 7s, yeah, sure, why not? Abex 3s, cool, that's fine. Fidget spinner, yeah, sure, why not? Crappy Walmart bearings, probably not a good idea. Now you're ready to pump. <laughs>